So in this video, we're going to be learning how to design our index page. We're also going to be fixing a couple of bugs. You can see here we have our not logged in message being printed out, but below that we get this error. So we're going to fix that. So let's get started. So to design the website, we're going to use Bootstrap Studio. So if I go to Bootstrap Studio, you can see here is a sample design I've already created. So you can see this is what a post looks like. We have our likes here, our comments here, and then it says timeline. We have our post and then we have some details about the post. So I'm going to preview that in the browser. So I'm going to click preview. I'm going to turn that on. And I'm going to go to the browser. So you can see here is our simple design. We have some space up here for our logo. We have our search box. We have our menu. We can click on our sub menu and we can get some more options as well. And back in Bootstrap Studio, this is all created really easily. This menu is just a nav bar and that is just one of the default components. So if I type in nav bar, you can see there is the nav bar that I used there. The search box is custom. That's just a simple search box that I made, but all of this will be in the source code anyway. You can see there's also an animation on our heart so when we click on the heart and we click play, you can see there's an animation. We're going to use that animation whenever the like button is clicked. So we're going to export our design. So we're going to click on export. We're going to choose a folder to export it to. We're going to put it in the social network folder. We're going to click open and click export. So now that we've exported our code, what we're going to do is we're going to fix this simple bug on the index page. So to fix that, all we need to do is instead of echoing out, not logged in, we're going to change echo to die. And we're going to use this die function to print out not logged in and then to kill the execution of the page so that no more code gets run and then this user id variable won't be undefined so if we refresh you can see now it just says not logged in and the error is gone so we're going to log in we have to log in using the old form because the new form at the minute just returns the token in the console it doesn't actually set a cookie to log the user in so i'm just going to log in using the old login form so i'm logged in and going to the index page and there's one more bug. If I try to put in a comment and I've liked a post, I click on comment. You can see my comment gets posted, but my like gets taken away. So the post moved down on the timeline. And the way we're going to fix that is by not passing data in the address bar. We're going to be using Ajax. So what we're going to do now is we're going to import our design into our project. So to do that, what we're going to do is we have our design here. We have our project here. And what we're going to do is copy the assets and the index file. So now if I just delete the path completely, it'll default to index.html. So what we need to do is modify our API to return posts from the database. So we're going to go to our API and what we're going to do is when we get a get method, we're going to add another else if and this else if is going to be posts. And if we go back to the index page, scroll down, you can see this is the code we have to get the user's timeline. So what we'll do is copy this. This will get all the posts on the user's timeline. So all the posts from people that the user is following. We'll scroll up and we want to put it into our API. And what we'll do is we'll just paste it in. And what we need to do is change this query so that instead of using our old class, we're using our DB object that we created earlier on in the API series. So we'll copy that and we'll paste it in here as well. And we will delete the comments. And what we need to do now is get the user ID out of the database because at the minute we don't actually have the user ID because on the home page we're getting the user ID up at the very top here. We're getting it when we're checking if the user's logged in, but we're not doing that on the API. So what we're going to do is we're going to get the token out of the cookie because we're on the same domain. So we can use our cookie variable and we can use the SNID cookie, which is our login token cookie. And that means we don't need to pass it around in the URL to our API. So we have our token. And then what we're going to do is run a special query that's going to return user ID and it's going to be DB query. And we're going to say select user ID from login tokens where token equals token. And then here we just create our array. We pass in the login token just like this. And we have to convert it to SHA1 because that's how it's stored in the database. Just like that. And this will return an array. So we access the first element and then we access the user ID, just like usual. So you can see our posts have just been displayed, but we want them to be displayed using JSON. So what we're going to do is instead of echoing out HTML, we're going to echo out an opening curly bracket for the start of our JSON object. Then we're going to echo out the closing curly bracket for the end of the object. And then inside the object, we're going to echo out a string that says post ID. And we have to include a variable in a string with single quotes. So to do that, we write two single quotes and then two dots. And then we append on our post ID variable. Next, we want to put a comma in there. We'll just copy and paste this a few times. And we have our post ID. We have our post body. We'll just say posted by which is post username. And then finally, we're going to have our likes, which is going to be post likes. And we just need to make sure our commas are actually in the string. So we'll just delete those. Instead of echoing it out, we'll actually create a string. So what we're going to do is just create a variable called response. And it's going to be equal to a square bracket in a string. 
and that's how we start off an array in JSON. And then instead of echoing out everything, we're just going to say response dot equals to append on each of these items that we were previously printing out. So we just replace all the echoes. And then outside of the for loop, we're going to say response equals a square bracket to close off the array. We have to put in a, a comma here at the end of each item just so that we can add more items in. And if we leave the comma on at the end and we put on the square bracket, we're going to get an error. So what we want to do is remove the last comma. So we say response equals sub str response. And uh, we're going to start on the zeroth index, which is the start of the string. And we're going to go on to str len response minus one. And then what I'll do is just delete all these echoes in between so that it makes it easier to read. And we want to echo out response. We'll echo out some pre-tags as well, just so that we can read it better. And we want to put a dot there just to append on the last square bracket. And you can see here is all of our JSON. So now that we've got our JSON in our response, what we're going to do is echo it out. So we'll echo response. And on our index.html page, what we're going to do is we're going to load these posts in dynamically. So we're going to surround our block quote in a div. Uh, and the div's class is just going to be timeline posts. And then we'll put in the block quote. What we're going to do is we're going to scroll down and we're going to add in some jQuery. And what we're going to do is we're going to say document.ready. So when the document loads, we're going to run a function. And the function is going to send an Ajax request. And we already have that on our login page. So we're going to scroll up. We're going to copy this Ajax. And we're going to paste it in here. We're going to change the type of the request from post to get. And we're going to go from API auth to API posts. We're not sending any data off, but we're going to get some data back. So our data is just going to be empty. And then on success, we're going to log what we get back. And then on error, we're just going to log that as well. So now if I open up the network tab, I go to console and I refresh. Now you can see here is our JSON. And before we go any further, we just have a slight syntax error in our JSON. So we'll go back to our API and we fix that. Our syntax error is just we're not surrounding our strings in double quotes. So we just put in a single double quote around the body string and around the username string, just like that. And we should have valid JSON now. And we can check that by saying json.parse. And now that we've parsed our JSON, what we're going to do is just store in a variable. We'll call it var posts. And then what we'll do is we'll iterate through the JSON. So we'll use jQuery and we'll say dot each. And then we pass in posts. And then we run a run a function for each item in posts. And then what we're going to do is we're going to pass in the index, which is the first parameter. So then we can say console.log posts and we'll point at a specific index. And if we refresh now, you can see we get each of the objects printed out. So now we have access to each individual object. So we can say timeline posts, which is the div we created earlier, dot HTML, which is how we access the HTML within that. And we can set the HTML to whatever value we want. So we're going to set it to itself plus, and here is where we're going to put in the HTML for our post. So we'll copy that. And here we're going to paste that in. And here we get a load of errors to begin with. So what we'll do is we'll just delete all the blank space, just like this. And now if we just refresh, we should get that same post printed out three times. So now we just want to fill in the post with the values from our API. So the first value is going to be the post body. So that's going to be posts index dot post body. Now you can see we have the three post bodies printed out. I'm going to copy and paste this. I'm going to scroll over. I'm going to paste it in here. We can see the number of likes. I'm just going to paste in likes. We have posted by. We're going to paste in posted by. And then finally we have the date, which we're going to paste in now. And we're going to say post date. And we have to go back and just change our API slightly. We have to go to the API and create another field called post date. And that's going to be equal to posted at. And we're going to select posts stop posted at. So now we're going to refresh and hopefully all our posts should be displayed correctly. Now you can see it says my second post, my first post, and then the other post. It says when it was posted, it says who posted it, and it says the number of likes. The number of comments is just a static number at the minute because we aren't actually storing the number of comments with each post. So we could just go back to our index page and just take away the number of comments. So we'll just, instead of saying two comments, we'll just say comments, and then users can click on that and display the comments. So here we have our likes, our comments, our posts, and everything's displayed correctly. In the next video, we're going to be learning how to like posts using Ajax. But that's it for this video. Don't forget to like, comment, favorite, and subscribe. Don't forget to enter the competition to win a free copy of Bootstrap Studio. All you have to do is follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Reddit, and subscribe on YouTube. And by doing that, you'll have four entries into the competition. The first winner will be announced really soon. But that's it for this video, and I'll see you next time.